Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Now for a long time you guys have been asking me, do I ever trim bulls? Well today is your lucky day. We've got Get Lucky in the shoot for a trim. He's got something going on with his left rear. So we're gonna take a look at that. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you one of the oddest things that I've seen in quite some time. But first up, let's get this big boy up in the air and get him trimmed. Now, even though I know it's his left rear foot that's causing the problems, we're gonna trim him like we would any other animal. I'm gonna start with this right front foot. I'm gonna trim that and then I'll work my way around until we get to that problem foot. Even though in most of my videos, I'm only working on one foot, in this video and in all my trims, we trim all four feet on all the cows that I trim. So today we'll start with the left front, get this trimmed up, just a normal routine trim. With bulls, there's not a lot of trimming that typically needs to be done. They spend a lot of time on their feet and in so doing, they tend to wear them down a lot. So there's not a lot of trimming to do. We're just gonna touch these feet up, make sure they're balanced properly, put them down and we'll get on to that problem one. And with this right front wrapped up, let's swing around back and take a look and see if we can figure out what the problem is on this back foot. And sure enough, there it is. It doesn't take long to figure this one out. We've got some digital dermatitis there and got a little bit on the right rear as well. Let's get these feet picked up and get to work. Now you'll notice with this foot, there's not a lot of trimming that needs to be done here. Almost everything that does is on that lateral claw. I'm just gonna lower that just a little bit to balance it, shorten that toe up just a touch, and then we're gonna work on that little bit of digital dermatitis in that cleft area, and then we'll move on to that left rear. The blue paste I'm applying here to treat this digital dermatitis is a mix of copper sulfate, salicylic acid, and some petroleum jelly. I don't use this on digital dermatitis related to the corium because that copper sulfate can be a bit too harsh for that, so I stick with salicylic acid in that case. And even on some of these heel lesions, I will use salicylic acid as well if they're small. I'll show you that here in a minute. But let's pick up this left rear or try to, he's not letting me. See, if he puts enough weight down, I have to readjust him. I can't pick that foot up if he decides that I'm not going to. So we've got him readjusted, we've got this foot in the air. You can see exactly now what we're dealing with. This guy is what the, ter the term uh, hairy heel wart or the slang term for digital dermatitis is. That's where it came from. You can tell why based on its appearance. First things first, let's get this foot trimmed up and then we'll move up above and take care of this lesion. Now, most of the time, digital dermatitis is not gonna look like that. It's gonna look like this. Or when they first start, they're gonna look like this. Now, when they're this size, I can treat that with salicylic acid and that will take care of that, no problem. But when they're a little bit bigger, like they are here, this is where I almost always use this mix of copper sulfate and salicylic acid gives that a uh, little more bite and is able to get in there and attack those spirochetes that are living inside that deeper down in there. You can take care of that much better than the salicylic acid will alone. 
Now this big guy over here, definitely gonna get the copper sulfate paste. Now another thing, when they get this big, they can cause even more heel horn erosion and even in extreme cases, underrun the sole. Luckily that hasn't happened here. Now you might be asking yourself, how did this lesion get to be so big? Well, the reason is, is because on a lot of these uh, parlors, when the cows come into the parlor, they get milked and as they're coming out of the parlor, that's when they go through the foot bath. Now he's a bull, so he's not going in to get milked. Therefore, he's not making nearly as many passes through that foot bath. And in, especially in these winter months when we're not able to run the foot bath enough, that's when these lesions can get larger and larger. And in this case, his got quite big. You'll notice though, he doesn't really favor this foot. Even after treatment, he's walking out almost painlessly. And that's why he really didn't get noticed until a little bit later, he started to hold that foot up a little bit. And that's why he made it on the trim list for today. So now we're gonna get this foot wrapped up. We're gonna swing around, trim up that left front quick. We're gonna let him go. You'll be able to see how he walks. And then I'm gonna show you something that I haven't seen in quite some time. Maybe never actually on a freestyle cow. And he's off. As promised, let's move on now to that strange thing that I saw earlier. Now look, if we go to the side here, look at the indentation in the sole of this cow's foot. Now I've seen this before on tie stall cows, cows that are stanchion cows, cows that tend to stand in one spot for a long period of time. Their feet will actually mold to the contours of the ground. If they stand in a certain spot, that will actually start to form in that sole. But these... These are freestall cows and pasture cows in the summer. So they don't stand in one spot, but she has decided she's going to do that regardless. You can see here, even after I've trimmed this, I still can't get that ridge out of there completely. I don't want to take it all the way down to that level or I will create a thin sole. But you can see here, she's obviously standing in one spot by her own free will. We move on to that left front. She's got the exact same thing here. We swing to the side, you can see this one is even more noticeable. And once again, as I trim her, I can't get that all the way out, but I've got it trimmed up as best I can. Strange, you never know why a cow does, a th does the things that they do, but she obviously likes to find a spot to stand all the time. Now here we go, I'm gonna leave you guys with some cute baby calves. As always guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.